All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 272 of Psycho's Platters. Always powered by coffee each and every time. <sighs> Been a long day. Been a long week, guys. So, uh, I'm glad that you guys really enjoyed the last episode I went off and did. And, um, if you haven't seen episode 271, where um, I throw a bunch of uh, LP finds, some very cool LP finds, and some BCLT, uh, it behoove you to uh, go watch that, along with the Davy Jones Live in Japan from 7A Records that was prior to that. So this one here is going to be kind of a, um, it's going to be a willy-nilly uh, episode, various stuff. We got a little bit of things here, a little bit of things there. Um, got a little BCLT, just a little bit, a couple 45s. I'll show you. And um, so let's see. Um, you know what? Uh, last week, last week kind of sucked in uh, in music deaths, guys. Eddie Money passed away at age 70. I thought I'd throw, I'd show you this one. I have a bunch more than this, but for the life of me, I cannot seem to find it. I have Eddie Money's Life of the Taking album signed by him. Um, when I met him in 2004, I'm, in fact, I'm kind of looking at the uh, poster for that gig. It's in July of 04 that I got to. Uh, to work backstage. That was the first time I got to work backstage in any event. John, the organizer, was totally cool. He really, really was. I uh, <clears throat> I felt bad because I think it was a year or two before that I was supposed to work backstage for him. Um, Blue Oyster Cult. I was supposed to work backstage for Blue Oyster Cult one year, and another year was Kansas, and I didn't get to do either of those. But I did finally get to uh, to see Eddie Money, and Eddie Money was actually pretty cool. He was a really cool guy. Um, like I said, being that this was 15 years ago, I remember we got there to help with the setting up of such, and uh, I found out that he was an avid golfer. He he, I'm I'm talking about McHenry, Illinois. Okay, so anybody that knows from Northwest Illinois. We got a lot of good golf clubs in the Chicagoland area. We really, really do. A lot of golf courses. And so Eddie uh, went off and shot a round of golf. I think he shot nine, if I remember right. Nine hole. And then went to one of the better steakhouses that we had in town before he came to do the show. And, uh, you know, he was just very warm and personable. I thought it was kind of funny that, uh, um, after, you know, let's see, during the gig it was pretty cool. That was the first time I didn't know that he could play saxophone. That threw me for a loop. One of the things, though, that got me, and I'm like, oh, Eddie, this is a family show. He went off and, and towards the end of a number as he's talking to the crowd. He goes, where's so-and-so? He was the guitar player. Um, and... The guitar player had to go to the bathroom. We had porta potties backstage, okay? So he says into the mic, and <laughs> he's talking towards the porta potties. He goes, "Remember, any more than any more than two times, you're playing with yourself." I'm going, "Oh my God, this is a family gig," and he was chuckling away. <clears throat> yeah. Also, um, on uh, drumming for that for that tour at the last minute was Donnie Baldwin, uh, former drummer of Elvin Bishop and Jefferson Starship slash Starship. Okay, so I thought that was kind of cool. I like I said, I'll have to another time. I'll have to look for the other Eddie Money albums because I got like four or five signed, 
uh, he was very generous with that. And uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, he did a brief meet and greet with the crowd. I want to say it was like, but it was only like 20, 30 minutes, but he did it anyway. So I thought that was really nice. Um, so rest in peace, Eddie, honestly. Um, also, Rick Ocasek from the Cars. Man, oh man. That got me. You know, I I always was a big Cars fan. Seriously, from the first album on. Um, my favorite song from them, though, Dangerous Type. I always liked that song. But, uh... I remember wearing out on cassette the car's greatest hits. I remember that. I think the only one that I remember that I was a little disappointed with, but I was still happy to get it, was the 1987 album Door to Door. That was the one with Strap Me In and You Are the Girl. A couple good songs, but that album just didn't seem right. So I don't know, but. Uh, so those two passed away. Also, um, as of this filming, which is Wednesday the 25th of September, um, Ginger Baker is critically ill, I am told. Which is sad, actually. I just, this is so weird, because I was compelled, I wasn't feeling really good Tuesday. In fact, um, I was sick. I was dizzy. I threw up. I was in bed for half the damn day, and I don't even know why. Okay, because I mean I'm, I was okay today, but um, I got to watch the very cool documentary "Beware of Mr. Baker." I actually liked it. It it, it was an hour and a half. It's on YouTube. I behoove you to watch it if you have not watched it. But, um, so he's critically ill, and, and, and that's, I don't know, it's too bad. He can he comes off on the thing kind of an ass. He's got such talent. He did. I love Cream. Huh. I love those records. Um, I love Blind Faith. I know he did other stuff, too. Hawk, he dabbled with Hawkwind. I'm told he hated them. Oh, boy. Um, and parts of those sessions came out in the early 80s. Baker Gervitz Army, which I think I actually have got one or two of those. I'm going to have to play them because I'm not going to lie. I have not played the Baker Gervitz Army stuff. <clears throat> um, I do remember him being in Masters of Reality in 92. Um... I had that CD at one point or another, and it disappeared. I was just like, damn it. And then he tried, of course, um, to capture some of the magic in a way with BBM, <laughs> uh, Baker, Bruce, and Gary Moore. Uh, I think they did, like, two albums, too. And Ginger did some solo stuff, too. So, keep them in your prayers, guys. I don't know. It's just, it's not good. It's not good at all. Uh, okay. I, I Go figure, I only found one album this week. Just one. But for 50 cents, I wasn't going to screw this up. On Enterprise, <clears throat> I think this is 70 or 71. You'll have to excuse me. I just, I've been laid back today. That's right, the River City Street Band. On Enterprise, which was a Stax offshoot label. Um, it's got some feather scratches, but nothing too, too bad. The reason why I grabbed this, other than I'm curious, I mean, I've been told some decent things. I mean, as you can see, unfortunately, somebody did something to the cover. I bought this more to listen to than anything else. Um, several of the band members came from Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is not too far away from here, and I'm led to believe there's two of the surviving members are still living in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in the Northwest Arkansas area. I would not mind trying to get this signed. Here's the front, here's the back um, of this. Uh, Doug and I talked. They made three albums, if I remember correctly. 
speaking of Doug, we'll go off and mention, um, very nice, he was very nice, he gave me a handful of 45s, he was going through boxes and boxes, first one right off the bat, uh, mid-60s, white label, Columbia, Ray Price is for the good times, I actually dig this tune, I remember hearing this on radio, even going back to the 70s. Very good. I, I Very, very clean, too, for that matter. Um, also, I heard this tune before, and it's uh, it plays through. I played both sides. On Checker, from, if I remember correctly, I think it's 53-54, the Tune Weavers, Happy, Happy Birthday Baby. Very nice. Very nice to have that. And then lastly, I've come across a handful of copies of this over the years. Most of them trampled on by an elephant or trashed to holy hell. But this time, thanks to him, I get a really nice copy of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers' Why Do Fools Fall in Love. I am a sucker yeah, I mean, this is a very, very clean copy of that. I love doo-wop. Man, oh man, I love doo-wop. But, tragic how Frankie Lyman, you know, his life. What a waste. What a waste. Um, so that little VCLT from Mr. Fields, host of the Vinyl Grotto radio show, which um, he, uh, today actually on his Facebook page, go look on his Facebook page, had a mini bio on the New Colony 6. Very nice stuff. Found this for a buck at an antique mall, even though, of course, the price says 10 cents originally. I almost didn't see this. This is Grand Old Opry. This is the front. This is the back. This is a program. This is what you would get if you went into the Ryman Auditorium. November 12th, 1960, and it says number 263. I wonder if they stamped these individually, you see, I guess to figure out the count. <clears throat> so, let me give you, I know, <laughs> let me give you a gist of things. They um, had different stages, and they would go from 7.30 at night to midnight, and it would be broadcasted on WSM in Nashville. So you want to hear, I'm not going to mention every one of them, but you want to hear some of the top performers that you would have saw November 12, 1960? That's what I thought. All right, so Pet Milk sponsored this one. Cowboy Copas, George Hamilton IV, Kitty Wells. That's what you would have saw for that one. The Martha White Stage, 8 to 8.30. Porter Wagner, Wilburn Brothers, Patsy Klein. God, just to have a time machine, right? On the Prince Albert stage, Hank Lachlan, Archie Campbell, from, uh, you know, would end up being on Hee Haw. Carl Butler, June Carter, Jefferson Island Salt, Farron Young. Wow, that's the only one, really, huh? Okay. Stevens, whatever that is. Hank Snow, Bill Monroe, Hackshaw Hawkins. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Black Draught, Jim Reeves, Wilburn Brothers, Patsy Klein. Now, a lot of these are mostly 30-minute shows, but then it looks like you get to the 10 p.m. <coughs> For a little while, they're 15-minute shows. So, I mean, they must be ushering. I'm told they ushered people out. It was crazy. I don't get it. Frosty Moore, Johnny and Jack, Kitty Wells, George Hamilton. Jameson Stage, Cowboy Copas, Del Wood, D. Kahn, Farron Young, Carl Butler, String Bean, yeah, who would be tragically killed in the early 1970s, and he was a hee-haw regular, too. Coca-Cola Stage, Frank Snow, or excuse me, Frank Snow, Hank Snow, Hank Lachlan, Arch Campbell, Jordan Ayers, 
Phillips and Botaroff. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Jim Reeves, Hackshaw, Hawkins, Gene Shepard. And lastly, General Shu, 11.45 to midnight, Porter Wagner, Bill Monroe. I thought this was kind of amusing. Uh, your official Opry prices for November 1960. A, a Coke was a dime. Popcorn was a dime. Peanuts, dime. Picture book was a buck. Hot dogs, 15 cents. Coffee, 10 cents. And hey, you want a cushion? <laughs> a buck. I still think this is interesting. Too bad it wasn't autographed, but it's okay. Uh, artist plug. New artist plug. If you like interesting music, and I mean interesting. The new CD from Serrano Torres, that is spelled S-E-R-R-A-N-O hyphen T-O-R-R-E-S. He is an electric cellist. He is also a local Northwest Arkansas musician who sometimes performs in a duo called Rosenbridge. They opened for Creed Bratton from the Grassroots in the Office and Jay Leno. I got to see him perform about two Sundays back at a coffee shop here. This is his new album. He is on Spotify if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, but he does have his own website. Eventually I may end up doing a review on this. But I've heard several of these. His version of Embrace. Oh boy. Oh, is this something? Serrano Torres. All right. I picked up some books not too long back. Somebody's looking over my head here. Do you mind? All right. Okay, I'll go again. Grumpy Care Bear. Mm-hmm. Grumpy Care Bear. You didn't think I forgot about the Care Bears, did you? Jessica's favorite thing, it was. Back on your shelf, Grumpy. Hey, no, I don't know when the curtains are coming back. I know some of you people wonder about those Care Bear curtains. I know you do. <laughs> Alright. I got a couple cool books at Goodwill. From Dave Marsh from 1983, before... I get old, the story of the Who. Now, yeah, I know this thing's dated, obviously, okay? But damn, was it an interesting read, up to the point of 83, okay? I don't know about you out there. I'm a big Who fan. I've always been a big Who fan. I think, truthfully, the first time I, uh, I ever listened to them um, was, well, one of the first singles I bought was Slip Kid. I didn't care for squeeze box very much. I don't know why. But Slip Kid, that was the one I grabbed. And then I went backwards in the catalog. Um, I would love, you know, I do have a handful of Who albums on my want list. Uh, the first couple, actually. I do not have My Generation. I do not have The Who Sell Out. I don't have Magic Bus on Tour, which is not a live album, but that's what it's called. I don't have those three. I have everything from Tommy all the way to um, It's Hard. And um, the new one's coming out in November. I do like the new song, Ball and Chain, which really isn't a new song. It's a new arrangement. It was, done, it was a Pete Townsend 2015 song, Guantanamo, just done, like I said, with Roger singing. I like it. I can't wait to hear the rest of the album, uh, which comes out in November. It's going to be their last album. They kind of said that already. I hope it's better than Endless Wire. I didn't like Endless Wire. Sorry. Also, one I'm currently reading that right now, and it's half interesting, The Sun and the Moon and Rolling Stones. Basically, this guy who wrote for Rolling Stone, he also is from uh, Illinois area. I want to say around Skokie. This guy was originally from Skokie, Evanston area when he was growing up. Uh, he talked about some of the record shops he went to. Uh, basically, he, he gets fly-on-the-wall perspective from the 1994 Voodoo Lounge tour. And he's going behind the scenes, but he's also talking about backstory stuff. 
I mean, I'm about almost halfway through it. Really interesting. Both of those were a dollar, by the way. Um, okay. My birthday's Friday, this coming Friday. Yeah, the 27th of September. Anybody want to get me any gifts? <laughs> uh... Psycho, P-S-Y-K-O underscore DJ at Yahoo.com. Drop me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so, birthday will be interesting. The next day, uh, the casino is doing a free show. The return of Fog Hat, that's right. Basically, Roger Earl, okay, Roger Earl is the only one. But so what? I have, I mean, I, I actually like some of the newer CDs. Uh, I've got uh, the 2000 stuff. I don't have any of the 2010s yet. I need to get those. But, uh, so, I'm hoping to bring some... i got some Foghat albums. I've got Savoy Brown albums. I've got... Um, I'm going to go with my friend Donna Jo Cat Lady and a few other friends. We're going to go... Hopefully, I'll be back with autographs, and that'll be another show... Uh, Charlie Hewn's the lead singer. He used to sing for Ted Nugent and Humble Pie. Uh, and uh, Brian Bassett originally got his start with Wild Cherry, you know, play that funky music, White Boy. And uh, Molly Hatchet in the 90s before he joined Foghat. So hopefully I might be getting some, some autographs, I hope. Uh, tonight, Zach Wild Black Label Society is playing about two towns down. I would have loved to have gone to that, but I'm told that one was sold out. So, I'm going to leave you with one last comment. <clears throat> I have been debating for about the last few days. I think I want to try to do a new segment in this channel. Ask Psycho. That's right. Ask Psycho. Uh, I love talking about music. You know that. You all know that in the BC. I love you, BC. Is there any questions that you've got for me? I got a lot of stories. I got a lot of things that have happened. Uh, it's just, just anything that just you want you want to pick my brain. Beats picking my nose, right? Mm -hmm. So, ask Psycho. Um, what if if you want to contribute a question or two, drop it in the comments because. I might just do that in the next week or two. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I might just, just do it that way, just ever, ever so often, um, and see what you guys get. I like talking about all kinds of things. It's not always just vinyl, but vinyl is what I love the most as far as for hobbies are concerned. Um. All right. Also, um, hoping to have. A new music review, well, classic album review, excuse me. Abbey Road, 50th anniversary, coming out on Friday. Probably will be getting the two-disc edition, and we will review that over the weekend, maybe. Um, there's so many things I need to do. Just not enough time. All right, I love you, VC. I'm going to get going here. Take care. God bless. Rock on. Like I said, if you got a question for Ask Psycho... Drop it in the comments, and uh, you know what? I'll consider it, and we'll do one real soon. Take care.